This is Chicho. Welcome to another live stream. And uh, today is September 20th, 2019, and it's our drop in math tutoring session number two for the 2019 2020 school year. Okay. Uh, that's our little intro. We've done a lot of these. Uh, we did a lot of these last year for last year's school year, and we're going to do a lot for this year as well. Okay. And uh, for those of you watching on YouTube or any other platform that we end up loading this video on, uh, we'll probably provide some links in the description of this video uh, if you want to reference some stuff. And usually the way it works is just uh, we sort of chill for a bit, uh, do a little bit of greet, uh, meet and greet salutations and whatnot for a few minutes until people start rolling in. And uh, if people have math questions, uh, they can ask the math questions and I'll try to help you guys out okay uh, as much as I can uh, aside from that uh, on discord we have a discord page there was someone that uh, mentioned uh, mark metals how are you doing hello friend hello hello I'm glad the comic books got there on time oh let me change up the the chat bring it down because uh, this was set up for I don't know what it was set up for. Uh, we had it set up for. Um, and what you will call it? Uh, I'm glad the comments got there on time. Uh, and you liked. And you liked. And I hope they come back at a high grade. Um, and just to finish off my thoughts, uh, there was someone that was, came on Discord in a math folder that we have. And uh, amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Amazing Spider Man. Uh, I'm sending them off. Are you? You're going to send them off to be graded? Nice. 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 I hope, seriously, those are very high grade. Most of them are very high grade. I hope they come back higher than what we graded it for. Uh, I'm sending it back to you. <laughs> I'm sending it back to you. <laughs> we'll see what happens, Mark. We'll see what happens. What grade? I hope, I hope they get back at 9.8. Uh, afternoon, Twitching Jason. How are you doing? How are you doing? Thank you for the thoughts, though, Mark. Thank you for the thoughts. Uh, Starsky, how are you doing? Doing good. Please message me a good uh, address, because I'll send you the graded copy. Dude, you don't have to for your personal collection. Uh, Mark, I appreciate it very much, man. But uh, you won them. You bet on them. Uh, up to you. Up to you. I don't have any of those books graded. I only have, like, I don't know, eight graded books. So in my collection of, I don't know how many I got, right? King Tom, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Doing well, man. Mathematics, mathematics. I've already decided. You've already decided. Okay, we talk. We talk. We talk, Mark. We talk. Okay. Um, aside from that, just to let you guys know, um, there was someone on Discord uh, that came on. I forget who it was. On our math folder that asked me if I had any videos on quadratic equations, quadratic functions. And they mentioned that, you know, they know I've done a few quadratic stuff and I've done a, a lot of quadratic uh, stuff. Um, videos for quadratics uh, in ASMR mathematics as well as the language of mathematics. Uh, Mask of Raven, how are you doing? And uh, if there aren't any, you know, we'll chill for you know a couple more minutes okay if there aren't any straight up right off the bat math questions coming up i'm gonna do a video this video or this session we're gonna do quadratics i'm gonna run you through the mindset of why we're studying quadratics what they represent how they come about and the thought process that we have to go through to start analyzing quadratics and what they can lead up to okay um, and this is sort of going to be a condensed version of a few videos that we've put up in the language of mathematics and ASMR and math uh, so I'm sort of uh, putting it all together and I'm going to treat it the way I would meet a student where they were getting into quadratics and they understood basically you have to know adding subtracting multiplying dividing how to move around an equal side what a function is and all that jazz right just preliminary stuff but i'm going to lay it on thick okay if there are any math questions that you want 
need to deal with ask them i'm willing to you know, i'm totally okay with stopping the thought process dealing with your questions and then continuing on with the quadratics because what i'm going to present you know depending on how deep i go into it uh it could take anywhere between half an hour to two hours right <laughs> depending on how many tangents we take and whatnot but i'm definitely open to this is dropping open math tutoring session right so i'm definitely open for trying to help you out in whatever uh, concepts you're trying to understand better and whatever school work you might be doing or outside of school that you're trying to wrap your head around uh, you know what's going on uh, in the realm of mathematics especially regarding certain topics that you might be dealing with okay uh, i hope that's okay um, because quadratics is huge Quadratics is uh, Ron, how are you doing? Rohan, Ron, Rohan. Welcome to a math live stream. Oh yeah, let me pop up this, uh, the chat. That way, uh, the, hopefully the, what do you call it? Uh, the computer won't be working so hard. So we won't, uh, hopefully I didn't lose any of the chat. Apologies about that. I should pop this up. Uh, pop this out uh, sooner rather than later, right? Because as soon as you pop it out, you lose some of the chat sometimes. Um, and we're set there. Cool. So we're about seven minutes in. What do you guys say? Should we do uh, a little quadratic? Should I give you the lowdown? Uh, what is going on with quadratics? What are these things? Why do so many people ask us about? quadratics why does it take so many people out of the game right why is there so many layers involved with quadratics right? let's do okay looks like we're good we got the last stream going we got a, we got a handful of people watching which is good it is 1 p.m so on the west coast there's a lot of people still in school in the central can the united states there's people just got out getting out of school and the last thing they want to do is do a two-hour math drop in tutoring sessions on the east coast they're about three hours ahead so they got out of school they got to get some food in them right if you're in school so maybe you can grab some food and sit down and think about quadratics i love that i uh, haven't seen quadratics be introduced in forever now Let's do this Mask of Raven. I'm going to show you right away. Ma just for you guys that are on chat, Mask of Raven is studying mathematics, if I remember correctly, Mask of Raven. So his mathematics is more powerful than my mathematics, right? I just happen to be here <laughs> on this side presenting the information. So if there's any questions you have that I can't deal with, maybe Mask of Raven uh, might be willing to help you guys out, right? And uh, we've done this a few times. Let's talk about quadratics okay first thing you have to appreciate about quadratics about any math concept is all of mathematics is layered on top of five axioms five rules right the whole universe this world that we have created that we're looking at through the lens of mathematics is based on five rules right that's it okay everything else builds on top I took a single math class in my second year of college, Laugh of Business Statistics. Statistics. Been forever since I've done a formal course on a course on math. But statistics is super important to Richard Jason. By the way, I have a student this year that I'm doing stats twelve with. So I know there's been a lot of people asking me to do statistics, right? And I mentioned that because they took it out of the core math curriculum in my part of the world like 10 years ago ridiculous right they took stats out <gasps> what <laughs> so i haven't had the opportunity to teach statistics full-on statistics for like 10 years so one of the reasons i haven't really delved too deep into statistics is because like anything if you don't use it you lose it right so i forgot a lot of terminology and all that jazz but this student of mine lucky for me is taking a full-blown stats course for grade 12 so I'm going to get exposed to a lot of statistics. So the odds are we're going to start doing more statistics. Okay. And 
lucky for me. Right? I have a student doing this so I can learn with him. And he's going to be teach me, teaching me a little bit, right? I've been working with the student for a long time. Uh, smart kid. Tink, how are you doing? Not seeing you in a while. Hope you are well. Doing well, man. School year starting. Excited. Stats can be fun. I'd be very interested in the statistics video series from you. If you're open to twitching, Jason. I'm 100%. One of the things I promised that I'm going to do is create a series on stats and create a series on calculus. Stats will be easier for me to do because they do deal with it in high school. Calculus, I'll have to go relearn a lot of stuff. I don't know why they that they take stats out in my experience. People love learning about probability and how to understand data. Mask of Raven blew me away. I was so pissed. <laughs> like, really. Because that took away the opportunity for me to... Camera's not focused. That took away the opportunity for me to do stats, right? And Mask of Raven. The other thing they took out of uh, my part of the world, out of the math curriculum, was Connex. They took Connex out like 15 years ago. Just imagine, beautiful, beautiful conics they took out. I was pretty pissed. I was pretty pissed. Let's talk about quadratics. Okay. So mathematics for us, based on five rules, everything builds on top, right? So the axioms, I forget what the proper terminology is and the da -da 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 -da, whatever it is, because those, those things are the core of it, right? I'm not teaching the core of it and teaching what's layered on top of it, right? But we are teaching some of the basics of how to do things, right? Regarding the axioms. And we're not worried about the proofs, we're worried about how to do things, right? So when you're learning mathematics, initially in elementary school and whatnot, first things you learn is counting, obviously, right? And I'm gonna put out a video series on counting, adding, and multiplying uh, for elementary school students, right? I've had some people come to me in elementary school that I, anyway th there's a gap that i want to fill i'll talk to you guys about that later okay but the first things you learn is counting and then you learn adding subtracting multiplying dividing right so you learn adding subtracting multiplying and dividing and then you learn how to move around an equal sign and you learn all this stuff for basically numbers right so they give you a bunch of numbers the box could be anything and they ask you to add them, subtract them, multiply them, divide them. And then they say, hey, solve them, which means deal with an equal sign, right? That's what you do in elementary school. And you build on top of that. You learn about fractions and whatnot. And you get into high school. And high school is when you're doing your algebra. You're learning more about the equal sign and how to solve equations, right? So if you're given numbers, you do adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and how to move around an equal sign. And then sometime in grade nine in my part of the world, in other parts of the world, it'd be much earlier, some places maybe later, right? You get introduced to something called functions, right? So they take an XY axis, Cartesian coordinate system, and they say, hey, what happens if you're looking at a system and you start analyzing that system? You collect data from that system and you plot that system, right? And what they do, they say the x-axis is just convention. You say this is the independent variable. Independent. And the y-axis, the numbers on the y-coordinate system, right? They're the dependent variable. Dependent. Right? And what's y dependent on? Y is dependent on x, of course, right? In general, usually time is on the x-axis. A lot of graphs you're going to see. Time is here and something else here. For example, your height as you're, you know, enter the world, you might be, how tall are you? little babies? <laughs> I don't know. Like a foot, maybe? <laughs> like they're this big? I don't know how tall they are, right? Eight inches, nine inches, ten inches, right? So you're this tall when you enter the world, year zero, right? And as you grow, you know, there's usually growth spurts, right? And, you know, a person, I'm just going to draw straight lines, by the way, for now. You know, you grow like this, and then all of a sudden you get growth spurt during your puberty years, right? And then 
you taper off, and then as you get older, you shrink. All right, your spinal column compresses, and as you get older, you shrink. Right? I don't know if you shrink this much, but you shrink. Okay. So that could be a graph of your height. The x-axis would be time, right? And the y-axis would be height. And the axis, the units on the axis, really depends on which part of the world you're in. You're either going to be centimeters, meters, inches, right? That's the way it works, right? Usually you're centimeters or you're inches, right? In the United States, you're dealing with inches, the units, and I think there's like two other countries that deal with inches, convention. Uh, Canada, we have a lot of inches as well, right? How tall are you? They say five feet, uh, you know, whatever it is, or six two or something like this, right? And a huge chunk of the world is centimeters, right? So that's a general graph. You learn how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, move around the equal sign in elementary school, and in grade eight, they dump it on you. In grade nine, you do a lot more of this in fractions and whatnot. And then you start looking at functions, okay? And these are functions, right? They could be relations as well. But in general, we're talking about functions where you're looking at a system, you're looking at a Y variable that is dependent on an X variable, okay? And this is where you wanna be. You wanna start looking at the world through the room, through the perspective of functions. What are functions, right? So what happens is, because we're gonna start analyzing different types of systems, trying to understand how they work, right? Because you could get a lot out of this if you were studying human biology or whatever it is, once you start graphing these things, you're gonna see the same type of graph for human beings, no matter where you are, right? You might see, you know, basically, I don't know if this is the graph, by the way, I'm just pulling it out of thin air, right? Let's say that's the graph of a human being, growth. The graph of another type of animal might be like this, right? Because if they grow up in nature, they need to grow up pretty fast, otherwise they get eaten, right? If you look at other mammals that they're born, like deer or any four-legged animals, when they're born, within minutes, they're walking, right? Human beings, it takes us years, a couple of years, to learn how to walk, right? There's nurturing going on there. So different types of animals have different types of graphs. Keep that in mind, right? So once we learn how to do this, the first question we ask ourselves is, hey, what's the most basic type of function we have? What's the most basic type of graph we can have? Other than a point, a function could be just a point, right? So first thing you end up doing is, you got an X, you got a Y. The X could be anything, the Y could be anything. The Y is dependent on the X and the X is the independent variable, right? So for us to start delving into the realm of functions, the first place we start looking at is how to graph a line, right? So lines could be like this, could be like this, could be like this, could be vertical, right? You start getting lines, but there's only really lines, just, it's a line. All that matters is, is direction, really, the slope, right? Where it, where it hits the y-axis, right? So once you start getting into lines, the, there's a general equation for a line, which is y is equal to mx plus b. That's your general equation for a line. That's a slope-intercept form. There's different ways you can present this as well. We've talked a lot about this, right? Here's a line as well. ax plus by plus c is equal to zero. As long as you have x to the power of 1 and or, well, you need y, well, no. x to the power of 1, y to the power of 1, right? They're not being multiplied together. They're in separate terms, okay? Then you have a line in general, right? So when you get x to the power of 1, y to the power of 1, you're dealing with a line, okay? Now, they're not multiplied together. You can't have x, y equaling 5, that's not a line. x over y is equal to 5, 
That's not a line. They have to be separate terms. They cannot be multiplied together, right? They have to be separate terms, not multiplied together. So let's graph a line. The vertical line is the only line that can't be represented as a function. Yeah, I believe. Straight line stuff is guessing. Uh, for sure. Uh, mask of Raven, this one, as Mask of Raven is pointing out, that's not a function. But it can be sort of represented as mx plus b to a certain degree. Because all this is, is really x is equal to a number. Whatever the number is, right? So it's still x to the power of 1 but x is equal to a number. The m, the slope of this thing, is undefined. It's looking down a vertical cliff, right? But we'll, get, we'll delve into that. Straight line stuff is guessing. I'm really bad at mathematics. I hope you get an appreciation for this. We're gonna get into the quadratics, okay? So let's graph a line. Let's graph one line. And we're going to use the slope intercept form. We've talked about lines, how you, how you change it from one form to another, and graph and stuff like that. But we're not going to go into that because we're building up to the quadratics, right? So let's assume we have the following line. Y is equal to 2 over 3x plus 2, right? Now, a line does this. Do, you, do I play Fortnite? No. I have watched it every now and then. And Vex is who I watch how to play. And Vex is one of the, um, uh, he's actually, uh, if you look, if you scroll down on my Twitch page with the with the little banner of who subscribed to me the most, the longest period and stuff like this, Vex has been subscribed to me for a long time. Fortnite is great. Uh, v, Vin X, ZK, you couldn't have Fortnite without mathematics. So how could Fortnite be greater than mathematics if you couldn't have Fortnite without mathematics? You can have mathematics without Fortnite. So mathematics trumps anything. You're in a math live stream. Mathematics trumps anything, right? Gradient of that is 2 over 3 and a y-intercept is 0 to 100%, right? So this is the slope, or as uh, a one fin says, the gradient and this is the y-intercept y-intercept right so if you're graphing this guy you're going to go y-intercept this is our y-axis that's our x-axis you're going to go to the y-intercept one two that's the y-intercept this coordinate is zero and two because when x is zero one two three negative one negative two negative three three four etc right when x is 0, y is 2, because if you set x is 0 here, 0 times 2 over 3 disappears, so y is equal to 2. Keep this in mind. This is a function. This is an equation that represents an x and a y and how they're related, right? So for you to find out what a y is at a certain x, all you do is just plug in that x and figure out what the y is, right? You could do the other way around. You could plug in a value for y, and find what the x value is associated with it, right? Can you explain how we can multiply, divide, uh, manipulate uh, infinities? Infinities, you know what? Uh, we're going to get into the infinity towards the end of this little uh, chat that we're doing with quadratics, okay? And once I do that, here, I'm going to put a little note here. Okay, infinity. We'll talk about infinity. I'll touch on it, okay? Uh, you can't really multiply infinities, divide infinities, but you can do limits. Okay. Mask of Raymond might know a little bit, well, a lot more about this than, than I do. Right? I put out a, a bunch of videos on infinity, by the way. If you do Chicho Infinity, uh, there should be at least two or three videos popping up. Okay. We're going to watch like watch the guy versus Logan Paul fight. Uh, is this uh, Ultimate Fighting? Uh, maybe. I watch them every now and then, right? So y-intercept is 0, 2, and the slope is 2 over 3. So to graph this, all you do is find a point on the graph, and then you go to the slope and do the slope. So we find the y-intercept, and from here, 
The slope is rise over run, rise over run. So from here you go up two, because the rise is two, and you go to the right three. One, two, three, boop. So here is our line. And this thing continues on forever, right? Unless you give it limits, boundaries. Pythagoras? Sure. Let's put Pythagoras here too. Hold on a second. We'll do Pythagoras as well. So we got infinity. And we got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay. Let me take this. Greetings, Dr. P. Uh, Vinix? <laughs> Let me take this to the level where we got the quadratics happening. We'll pop back in. And then we'll deal with the with the quadratics, the infinity, we'll have to wait until we get to the end. Dante, how are you doing? How's life? So here's a line. Cool. Nice. We got a line. We learned how to graph a line. Let's assume we have another line. Okay. Could use Pythagorean theorem to show how to do distance along a linear function. Ah, yes, we could. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do a little tangent from here. Okay. Thanks, Masker Raven. So we graphed a line, right? Now this could represent anything, right? A line could represent anything. You could, you could say this is looking on a map view of engineers trying to connect up point A to point B, and they want to find out how much, how many kilometers of road they gotta lay, right? So. When we say this is a slope, it doesn't necessarily have to be vertical. It could be in a plan map view, right? Where the X and Y are actually 2D, right? Looking from the top down, right? This could be the highway system. So they want to go from point A to point B. And let's assume point A, here, let's put this here, is at negative 3 and point B, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6 is when x is 6. So if I learn this, will I be good at Fortnite? Uh, it's the first step to a certain degree because this is line of sight as well, right? Do you know Nesmon? No, I don't, sorry. Do you teach any physics? Yeah, I'm working, I do teach physics as well. Uh, high school level physics. My background is geophysics. Uh, from university, right? So let's assume we want to go from point A to point B and we want to find out what the distance is here, right? So here's one thing we can do. By the way, this is a tangent. So this isn't really connected to quadratics to a certain degree, but it could be, okay? So to find the distance of this, what you can do is just draw a triangle, right? And realize that this is going to be 90 degrees because our Cartesian coordinate system is 90 degrees. So what you could say is, hey, we could use Pythagorean theorem here and go figure out what the distance is here, right? Figure out what the distance is here and use a squared plus b squared equals c squared to figure out what the distance is here, right? So first thing we want to do is figure out what this point is here, what this guy is here. That's negative 3. This point here was 6, right? Now, on a Cartesian coordinate system, you have to have an X and a Y. You can't just have an X by itself or a Y by itself because you're in two dimensions. If you're in two dimensions, you need an X and a Y to be in two dimensions. <laughs> Are you saying that whipped cream on your chin? No, sorry, no whipped cream. Just nice old age, going, going, uh, going gray. Hopefully one day you will reach this level, right? There's a saying, there's a saying in Armenian that says, may your hair grow white, which is, which is sort of wishing you the best, saying that hopefully you'll reach on a ripe old age and enjoy your life, okay? Santa Claus must be fantastic at math because if he's on the North Pole, he has to map out all the places he needs to go to drop off the goodies, right? So we need to find out what y is associated with these x's, right? So we go back to our equation here. y is equal to 2 over 3x plus 2. 
So we want to find out what y is when x is negative 3, right? So all you do is just plug in negative 3 for x. So y is equal to 2 over 3 times negative 3 plus 2. Because this equation is a relationship between the x and the y. If we know the x, then we can find the y. Are you a math teacher? Yeah, I teach mathematics. Okay. Are you from Armenia? No, I've never been to Armenia. I was born in Iran, Armenian blood. I'm Canadian, West Coast Canadian, most of my life here. Right? Can't you, can't you hear the Canadian accent? Hey? <laughs> so, let's do this. If you're multiplying this, 2 over 3 times negative 3, this kills this, that becomes negative 1. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 plus 2, that's 0. Hey, y is 0. My graph is a little off. This guy should be here, right? So if we draw, might as well be accurate with our graph. So if we draw this more accurately with my line, right? This guy would go through here. So we're here. Cool. So when x is negative 3, y is 0. We found our y value here. And this guy would have to move up. So it's not really, the dotted line is not really here. But it's over there. So that's 6, right? And here's our 90 degrees. Let's do this as well. So that guy goes there, that guy goes there. That's that, right? You bad man, don't care. <laughs> uh, stag, stagzy, if you pay attention to this, I'll guarantee you, It'll make your life a lot easier and a lot sweeter. Guaranteed, man. Guaranteed. Uh, if you want to be uh, Vinix, if you want to be on the naughty list, you should read Lobo, the Paramount Theory Christmas Special. You'll see what Lobo does to the naughty kids. <laughs> okay. Check this out. So we have to find a y value associated with this as well, right? So again, we come up to the same equation. 2 over 3x plus 2, plug in the 6, y is equal to times 6 plus 2. 3 goes into 6 3 times, 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2, y is equal to 8. So when x is equal to 6, y is equal to 8. So this point here is 6 and 8, right? And this point was negative 3 and 0. Got a graph that math. Thanks for the bits or the bit. <laughs> right? So we found our points. Now all we have to do is figure out what the distance is here and what the distance is there, right? Let's do it. I'm gonna erase these guys. Check this out. Well, this distance is easy to calculate because it goes from negative three to six. So that distance there is nine. But if you wanna formula for it. Here's the formula for it. This point would be x1, y1. This point is your x2, y2, right? First point, second point. Okay. Hey, aren't you the same guy who I saw eating pomegranate seeds on YouTube? Yes, I am. Pomegranates are delicious, mega. <laughs> you know, and pomegranate season is coming up, winter end of fall winter in my part of the world we start getting pomegranates we'll do more pomegranate eating videos patience and i do chicho Tuching jason the brother uh, i can honestly tell you you're a legend bro. i can honestly tell you uh, once i start acquiring more patience uh, it's amazing how my perspective changed a lot and it helped me to um, to deal with a lot of situations <laughs> and allows you to become a little bit sharper once you become patient because you take you take people because people if uh, if they're being a little disruptive if they're being whatever that requires you to be patient with them usually they're either bored out of their minds they're dumb as a doorknob 
<laughs> not really. There's, I've never met anyone that's always a doorknob, but they're not the brightest person in the world. They've had a rough, the rough time in life. Uh, they, they're angry. They're lonely. There's a lot of social elements associated with that. So once I find myself to be more patient, it opens the door and helps those people along, maybe to break out of that sh their shell. And later on in life, you find out that they gain a lot from that it's just, it is what it is right it's, it's the grace and the grayness that has taught me this i've got a very high a in my math exam last year 93 or so and i'm aiming to get a good a this year too i'm working on differentials at the moment nice nice that's good do you meditate to be so patient uh, to a certain degree different types of meditation right so let's figure out what the distance is here right just too nice for me to do that thanks thanks daggy thanks for chilling here with me okay seriously you're going to appreciate where we're leading with this it's going to blow your mind right and you're going to be pissed because you weren't taught this in school right in this fashion okay not just this you would have been taught to a certain degree if you had a good teacher teaching you this way the dealing with Pythagorean theorem and distance of a line but leading up to the quadratics so let's figure out what the distance is here, right? So the distance is here. This is the horizontal. You go this minus this or that minus that, right? And it's the absolute value. If you're doing distances, you're not dealing with negatives right now anyway, right? So all you got to do to find out what the distance in the x direction is, in the horizontal direction is, is just go x2 minus x1, which is 6 minus negative 3, Negative and negative is positive, so it's not. So the distance this way is 9. Easy. What's the distance this way? Well, distance this way is going to be distance in the y direction, in the vertical, is going to be y2 minus y1. y2 minus y1. It's going to be this minus this. So it's going to be 8 minus 0, which is just 8. Okay. So the distance this way is 8. Now, my drawings are not to scale right that doesn't look like an eight if this is a nine my drawings are not to scale right it's the numbers that matter bat how are you doing welcome to the math live stream so according to the pythagorean theorem if you got a right angle triangle which we do right we got this going up to this and we got this right so if you want to find this let's call this c okay then this square plus that square equals that square. That's what the Pythagorean theorem tells us for a right angle triangle. So all you got to do is go a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a squared, let's call this a. It doesn't make a difference, a or b, as long as they're the legs of the triangle. So you can go 9 squared plus 8 squared is equal to c squared. 9 squared is 81 plus 64 is equal to c squared. So c squared is equal to... 5, 14. C squared is equal to, is this even showing up? There it is. Let me write this a little bit bigger so you see it. Green is pretty light. So C squared is equal to, what was it? 145, right? So if you want to find out the distance of C, you just take the square root of both sides. Square root, square root. So C is equal to, Square root of 144 is 12. Square root of 144, 145 is going to be 12 point something. We're just going to say approximately 12. So the distance from here to here is 12. So if this is engineers that are trying to build a road, trying to figure out how much road they're going to lay from point A to point B, it's going to be 12 miles, 12 kilometers, water gradients. That's your Pythagorean theorem. Hey, I'm doing great. Really interesting to see what's going on. I'm really curious about the physics around magnetism and how electrons work. Is there something you uh, something you do lessons on? Uh, you know what, Bat? I actually uh, specialize in electromagnetic and magnetic methods when I get my geophysics degree, uh, and I love that stuff. Uh, so at some point, we can definitely deal with it. I do have to touch up on the terminology. I haven't done geophysics for you know 18 years or so now. You're close to the root. Uh, so close to a perfect, yeah, so close. Just random luck, right? So close. But good enough. Good enough for us. 
Martin, how are you doing? Long time no see. You've been busy, man. So that's Pythagorean theorem. So that one dealt with. Okay. Let's kill this guy. I'm going to erase these guys. I'm just going to draw the line again. Okay. Because I want to link this up to the quadratics. So you can pause it, take a screenshot, or look at the video again, or whatever it is. Right? So let's take this down. Let's graph our line again. So we got our line. Let's draw it here. Y intercept of 2. Slope is 2 over 3. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Here's our line. That's that guy. Now, here's what mathematicians do. Or here's what scientists do. Or here's what people who play Fortnite do. Once you reach a certain level, you understand it, you want to go further, right? And in mathematics, as we talked about, if you have a number, right, or anything, base value, what you do is you learn how to add them, subtract them, multiply them, divide them, right? So you learn adding, subtraction, multiplying, dividing, and how to move around an equal sign, right? Now, the way it works, mathematicians, once you know how to do something, you want to apply these operations to that thing, right? To that function, to that system, right? So one thing mathematicians would start doing once they figured out how to draw a line, they would say, hey, what happens if we have another line and then we add them together? Let's draw another line. Let's use a different color. Let's use, let's use purple, purple. Purple, blue, red, red. No, I want to use red for something else. Okay, let's stick with green. Let's keep on doing green. Right? I'll push a little harder so it comes out better. So let's assume we have another line. Let's assume we have the following line. Da -da 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 -da. Y is equal to negative. Let's go negative two over three x minus three. Right. What's that line going to look like? Well, that line, the y-intercept, is negative 3. The sign in front of the number goes with the number. That's a mantra in math that I will continue to say, and I've said a lot. The sign in front of the number goes with the number. So that's negative 3. 1, 2, 3. Right? And the slope is negative 2 over 3. Negative 2. So if positive, you go up. Negative, you go down. So one, two, three, and then over three. One, two, three. So here's this line. Cool. Nice. We have line one and line two. Here's line two. Here's line one. So we could graph another line and another line and another line and another line. And there's only so many lines you can graph until you go, oh, I'm bored, right? And then you start going, okay, what can I do with these lines, right? Well, the first thing you can do with, these, do with these lines is add them up, right? So let's assume you come up with a new function. Let's do this in purple, okay? Let's assume we, we're going to create a new function, and the new function is not the green line it's not the blue line but our new function is the purple line and what we're going to do is we're going to add the blue line and the green line to make the purple line we just want to know what what happens right if we take this and add it to that so our blue purple line let's call this three because you're not going to use different colors when you're doing mathematics. You're going to number them. And in mathematics, subscripts are like a last name. Okay? So this is Y1, Y2, and Y3. Right? So Y3 is the first line plus the second line. So it's going to be equal to... 
I'm still going to keep on using different colors, just to, just so you see. It's going to be a Y1 plus Y2. Y2. The rest of this I'm going to do in purple. Okay. The purple doesn't come out any different than the blue, I guess. <laughs> Oops. Should we ever use a different color? Should we use brown? Should we use brown? Let's use brown. Maybe it'll come out better. Let's see. Is brown better? Yeah, that's darker. Let's use brown. So, we can kill that, kill that, kill that, kill that, kill that. And we're going to go Y3. Y3 is equal to Y1 plus Y2. So, what is Y1? Y1 is this. 2 over 3, X, plus 2, plus negative 2 over 3, X, minus 3. Okay. Cool. Now what you've got to do is combine like terms. So, 2 over 3, X, plus negative 2 over 3, and the sign in front of the number goes with the number. So this is positive negative 2, which is really minus 2. Okay. So 2 over 3x minus 2 over 3x, well, they kill each other. They're done. Right? So this guy kills that guy. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So y3 becomes negative 1. Right? So this line... The slope of this, if you're if you're thinking about this being as y is equal to mx plus b, this part, the slope is zero because the only thing we have is the y intercept. So this line looks like this. Here's y3. It's a horizontal line. Alright? Wow, cool. We just added that line and this line, and we've got a brand new line which is a horizontal line, right? Interesting. As we're talking about lines, it made me remember something, a video that is really interesting to watch. If it's okay, can I mention the title of it? It's uh, on YouTube. It's about a math question used in a math a championship that ended up being quite the surprise for everyone. Yeah, for sure. And you're welcome to go go to our Discord and post the video. Uh, is it okay if I link it? You can't link it uh, back uh, on the chat here. The Autobot is going to zap it. The only people that can link video, link pro, post the links are mods and me because we have you know trolls rolling in and posting links to crazy stuff, right? Uh, but you can go on Discord and link the video there in the math subfolder or any other folder that you think is appropriate okay so that's the new line right for okay awesome now keep in mind we could have had a different line added to these guys right so we could do here let's bring up light blue let's see if this comes out okay we could go hey here's another line y is equal to uh, 3x minus 1 and we could say, hey, this is line four. What happens if you add line four and line two? What do you end up getting? What happens if you add line four and line three? Right? So you can do a whole bunch of stuff like this. You can do combinations of multiple lines, just adding them together. Well, guess what? You can do the same thing with subtracting the lines. I linked in the math tab. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Matt. Or bat, bat small, okay. or sister, of course, right? So we can subtract a couple of lines. Let's do a subtraction, just so you know how how it lays out. This is supposed to be light blue. It comes out darker, sort of. I see it darker. You guys see it in a sort of a brown color. It will come up. Also, for anyone that is in Discord, search. This problem seems hard. Then it doesn't but it really is. Okay, cool, cool. So let's assume our new line, let's do this in orange. Orange is not going to come out. Let's do it in red. And then we'll erase all this. Okay. I love that. 
Oh, a streak blue, one brown. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I've watched his videos too. Masco Raven likes it as well. So let's assume we have the following. Let's say our line five, yeah, that comes out okay, was line four minus line three, right? So line four is three X minus one, and line four was negative one, right? So minus negative one. Right? You see how this goes, right? Negative and negative becomes positive, they kill each other. So our new line is 3x. So the y-intercept is going to be 0, and the slope is 3 over 1. So you go 1, 2, 3 over 1. Right? That's what we get if we combine this line. Oh, we didn't graph that line. Let's graph this line. So line 4 is negative 1. And then up three, one, two, three, over one. So here's this line, right? That's that line, line four, and line five is this guy, right? So all that happened, if we added line four, or subtracted line three from line four, it moved the line up, right? If we added this line and that line, it made a flat line. If we add this line and that line, it just shifts it up one, right? So it manipulates your line, right? You can do a whole bunch of these, and then slowly uh, you get bored adding and subtracting lines. So what do mathematicians do? They go, hey, what happens if we multiply two lines together? Hmm, interesting. Let's try that out. By the way, once you multiply two lines together, you're in the introduction of quadratics, and I'll show you what it looks like, okay? Let's erase all this. So keep this in mind. Functions are things representing, well, look at this, different systems, so we're not going to use the light blue. That thing smears. Lines are functions representing systems that we want to understand that we're presenting algebraically, mathematically, as well as graphically. So let's assume we have a simpler line. Let's assume we have the following one. y is equal to 2x. Actually, let's just make it no number in front. The slope we're going to make 1. Let's go y is equal to, no, no, let's keep it that way, 2x minus 3. That's line 1. Let's assume we have line 2 is x minus plus 2, okay? Now keep in mind, we can add these two lines and come up with a new line. So let's graph both these lines on the Cartesian coordinate system. Right? Here's our x, here's our y. Let's graph line 1. Negative 3, 1, 2, 3. The y intercept and the slope is 2 over 1. 1, 2 over 1. Okay. Here's line 1. Y1. And usually you label your lines. Night, night, how are you doing? Hey, Chicho, been a while since I've caught your line. Good to see you. Good to see you too, brother. Good to see you too. So here's line 1. Let's graph line 2. Line 2, the y intercept is 2. And the slope is 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1. Okay? Here's line 2. This is y2. Now we can add these two lines to come up with a new line. Should we do? Just add them? If you add these guys, y3, if y3 is equal to y1 plus y2, then let me erase these slope things so they don't confuse people right if we add these guys 2x plus x is 3x negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1 so y3 would be negative 1 and a slope of 1 2 3 over 1 so we would look like this that would be y3 you could subtract them 2x minus x if y4 was y1 minus y2 
2x minus x would be x. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. And that line would be y just have to be negative 5 and the slope 1 over 1. It will go like this, right? Anna, how are you doing? Now, what else can we do? Oh, check this out. We get bored of adding and subtracting lines. Let's multiply these lines. Multiply the lines. We're going to continue with blue. Okay. Let me give us a little bit of space here. And then we're going to graph them. Graph this. And you'll see what it looks like. Let's assume our new function, y5. By the way, uh, thank you for your follows. Thank you for the subs. If I've missed any subs. And thank you for the bits if I missed any bits. Okay. Uh, I sometimes don't catch the things popping up. Okay. Let's assume our next function, y5, is not adding or subtracting. What topic is this? Um, Pat, what I'm doing is um, giving an intro to what quadratics are, right? So what we started off with was just graphing a single line and then finding another line and then adding the two lines to see what the new function will look like and then subtracting the two lines to see what a new function when you subtract these two lines looks like, right? Then you can do this until the end of time, right? You can add and subtract lines being the most basic polynomial function that we sort of start analyzing, right? So you take one function, add it to another function to see what happens. Take one function, subtract it from another function to see what it looks like. And you do this, and then once you're comfortable enough, you go into the next operations, right? The next operation would be, let's multiply the two lines together. I am from Argentina. I do not understand much of her, but it serves me uh, for school. Awesome. Lord, how are you doing? I finally made it. Welcome, 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 welcome. So let's take line one and line two and multiply them and see what we end up getting. Now remember, when we subtracted, them, when we added them and subtracted them, we still ended up getting lines, right? If you take a line, add another line, you end up with another line. If you take a line, subtract another line, you end up with a line, right? What happens if you take a line and multiply it with another line? Let's take y1 and multiply it with y2. So we're going to take this, 2x minus 3, and we're going to multiply it with x plus 2. Okay. Once you do this multiplication, you're going to foil this guy out, expand it, right? So this multiplies this and this, and that multiplies that and that. You're going to end up getting 2x squared plus 4x minus 3x minus 6. This is going to be 2x squared plus x minus 6. So our new function is this. And this is a moment where you go, what? We took a line and multiplied it with another line. We took this guy and multiplied it by that. We took this guy and multiplied it by this. And we end up getting this, which is an x squared. And what this is, is a quadratic function. This is no longer a line. What this graphs is parabolas. They're curves. Okay. Now we've done completing the square to be able to graph this line. Find the uh, uh, vertex and find points, the x-intercepts and the y-intercept to graph it, right? We're just going to do it with the table of values. I want you to see what it looks like when you multiply two lines and you end up getting a curve, right? Only in mathematics, right? Not really only in mathematics because this is real life. There's systems that follow this principle, right? But let's see what happens. Now, at these points, these are the x-intercepts. Because all you do is, you ask yourself, hey, when does this line, y2, cross the x-axis? It crosses the x-axis of y0. So if you put in 0 here, you bring that guy over, so this is negative 2. 
over here, if you set y is equal to 0 for line y1, you get 0 here, bring the 3 over, it's 3, divide by 2 is 1 and a half, right? So this guy here is uh, 3 over 2, the x. And the y would be 0, and the y is 0, right? I have to hop off. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. You should talk to everyone later. You too, Twitch and Jason. And we're doing a couple of live streams this weekend, if you're up for it. Uh, we're going to do current events tomorrow and education Sunday, I think. So let's find out what happens here. You show me fundamental factoring cases that I don't understand can be. I hope that, I hope that's making sense for you. Okay. Now what happens is at these points, the y is zero. So what happens is this function also crosses those points. But let's just do a table of values, try to figure out um, find some more points on this what time are saturday and sunday streams uh tomorrow streams at 9 a.m my time uh this one was 1 at 1 p.m so four hours earlier right 10 11 12 yeah four hours earlier right and on sunday we're doing 1 p.m again okay and the sunday is education tomorrow's current events so let's just make a table of values. Y, sorry, X and Y. Okay. Let's plug in values for X and find out what the Y is. Let's plug in X is equal to negative two, just to convince ourselves that this function is gonna go through that point as well, right? If you plug in X is equal to negative two here, you're gonna get two times negative two squared minus negative two here, let me make this a little bit more room so you see see it better. Okay. Write it as big as possible. Let's do x here and y here and give us plenty of room on this side. So negative 2, we're going to plug in here. Okay. 2 times negative 2 squared minus 2 minus 6. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 2 is 6, 6 minus 6 is 0. So negative 2 and 0, this is also a point for this function. Let's plug in two, 3 over 2. When x is 3 over 2, 2 times 3 over 2 squared minus 3 over 2 minus 6. 3 over 2 squared is 9 over 4. You can explain later the exercise because I do not understand anything. Uh, you'll see what it looks like. Once we graph it, I hope uh, it makes sense a little bit. It really depends, Pat, how far deep, uh, how deep you are in your math education, if you've already dealt with quadratics or not, or even lines, right? So this becomes 2 times 9 over 4 minus 2, 3 over 2 minus 6. That kills that down to 2. So this is 9 over 2 minus 3 over 2 minus 6 over 1. Common denominator is 2. So this becomes, oops, 2 and the top becomes 12. I'm doing a lot of this mental, right? So we don't run out of space. Uh, what do we got? Hey, how come this doesn't equal 0? What's going on? I made a mistake somewhere. Uh, 3 over 2 was it 3 over 2 also 3 over 2 3 2 yeah 3 over 2 3 over 2 9 over 4 2 9 over 2 3 over 2 12 wait a second what's going on oh because this is a plus my bad plus 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 right so that's 12 over 2 minus 12 over 2 that's 0 as well so this point is on this graph as well. Water from toilet seats. <laughs> you don't want to drink that. Hey, dude, have you watched the new uh, new movie? It is like clown likes eat like no. <laughs> I watch. If you want to watch a fantastic movie, watch Dave Chappelle's. Uh, 
block party. I watched it again a couple of nights ago. Okay. Watch Dave Chappelle's block party. You show me fundamental factor in cases that I don't understand. It can't be. Hey, that's the same one. Same comment. I can show you how to factor it later. We've put a lot of videos on factoring. If you go Chicho factoring, you'll find tons of videos up. Right? Now, we know this graph goes through here and goes through here. Let's find out what the graph looks like between these two points. So let's plug in x is equal to 0. Okay. If you plug in x is equal to 0, here, I'm going to erase all of these because we found out what they were. We don't need to keep the work up, right? So this is 0. This is 0. Let's plug in x is equal to 0 and find out what the y is. If you plug in x is equal to 0, this becomes 0, that becomes 0, that's negative 6. So when x is 0, y is negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Wow. What? Point, point, point. Okay. I used a uh, medical herb last night before bed, and my bed felt so comfy. No need to <laughs> A little bit for that. <laughs> Ask a <famous> laughing. <laughs> you melt it in your bed. Right? Well, that point's there. What's going on? Let's plug in another point to see, because that's what you do. When you find a new function, you have to plug in points just to see how a function behaves. Let's plug in x is equal to 3 and see what happens. If x is equal to 3, 3 squared, so this becomes 2 times 3 squared plus 3 minus 6. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. 18 plus 3 is 21. 21 minus 6 is 15. So when x is 3, y is 15. Like, we're way up here. Right? Now, if you keep on plugging in numbers, plug in negative 1. Sure, let's plug in x is equal to negative 1. Okay? Let's give us a little bit of space so we're not so clumped up this is two i'm gonna put a bracket here so it doesn't interfere when x is negative one two times negative one squared plus negative one minus six negative one squared is one one times two is two two minus one is negative one negative one minus six is negative seven so when you're at negative one this negative 7. If you start plugging in numbers close to that, you're going to get closer to here. So the graph of this is basically going to look like, we could find the vertex, the lowest point. You just take this and that, add them together, divide by 2. So that would be uh, ba -ba 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 2, negative 4, negative a half. So it comes here. So basically what you're going to end up getting if you start plugging in numbers, you're going to start getting things like this. And this guy goes up. So our new function, this function here, y5, is going to look like this. Should we do this in red? Let's do this in red. Okay. So this function here looks like this. crazy you multiply this line a line with another line and you end up getting this what that's a quadratic as soon as this happens mathematicians would have gone initially first person doing this would have gone whoa what's going on right and just imagine because mathematics allows you to analyze anything in depth, right? You could take this thing apart. We didn't take it apart. We didn't start off with this. We generated this. So if you start taking this apart, you factor it, you get to here, you graph those guys, you get lines, you get the x-intercepts, you get the slope, and you realize that this guy is really made up of two lines multiplied together. The laws of math are indeed interesting to visualize, yeah, right? And once you get this, you can start 
taking this function and multiplying it by a line. So you could come up with a new function after you spent some time looking at quadratics. You could come up with a new function. Let's call it y6, right? Where you take y5 and multiply it by y1. Take this and multiply that. What are you going to get? Well, you're going to get a cubic function. It does another turn, right? So that's how the mathematic grows for us to understand things where more complicated functions if you're able to break them down into their prime factors right prime function factors you can begin to understand how that system works okay and for those of you that are interested quadratic functions they come into play in the real world in business where you're trying to maximize revenue in kinematics, physics, when you're looking at projectiles, right? When you throw something, if I throw this guy, this follows a parabola, but the parabola is upside down, okay? That's what quadratics are. Quadratics at the beginning, in, in beginning phases and in the introductory phase of learning, you have to have an appreciation that all they are are really just two lines multiplied together to give you a curve. And the reason that you get a curve, by the way, is this. Let's bring out the green. I'm going to make this thing look pretty messy right now. Don't take your eyes off the board. Break this thing down into three segments, right? One of them being here. One of them being between the two x-intercepts, and the other one being on this side. The reason that this multiplying two lines does a curve is because in here, in this side, y1 was positive and y2 was positive. You're above the x-axis, right? Well, if you multiply a positive and a positive, you get a positive. You're in the positive y coordinate y zone above the x-axis in this area y1 is negative it's below the x-axis but y2 is still positive if you multiply a negative with a positive you end up getting a negative so this guy between these two points for y5 is below the x-axis it's negative on this side y1 is negative, y2 is negative. If you multiply a negative and a negative, you get a positive. Hence, y5 is above the x-axis again. So it does a roundabout and comes back up again. Okay, that's where the signs come into play. Okay, I think this is pretty cool. I think this is fantastic. I think this is amazing blew me away many moons ago when I first looked at it in this light, right? And I really didn't look at it in this light until I started teaching it, right? Because it never really was the dominant thing that I had in mind when I was dealing with quadratics. I only started looking at it this light when my students started asking, asking me questions that I didn't have the answers for. So I had to come up with answers on my own to satisfy their curiosity and I found that this satisfied their curiosity right now how did we get here well we got here through taking two functions two lines adding them subtracting them and then doing other operations such as multiplying them right well what other operation do we have we got division. Let's divide two lines and see what happens. Let's divide line one and line two and see what happens. And that's going to link us up to infinity. Okay. I'm going to take some of this down. I'm going to take most of this down after I have a sip of tea. Okay. I'm a little parched. That took us about an hour and a few minutes to go through that. 
and I brought out some tahini for me as a snack. This one's with maple syrup, sesame seeds and maple syrup. Sesame tahini sauce and maple syrup, right? So sweet. Full of goodness. Highly recommend as a healthy snack. Let's rewrite these two lines. 2x minus 3x plus 2. 2x minus 3. x plus 2. Okay. Then we're going to take the rest of this down. All of it. Maple syrup tastes amazing. <laughs> it's sweet and uh, it's like candy. In Canada, one thing that happens in the winter, you can go to some markets, farmers markets and stuff like this, and they have a block of ice, okay, and they have maple syrup, and what they do is they pour maple syrup on a block of ice, and it starts getting hard, sort of, and it's malleable, but it starts getting hard, so they mess around with it, and they make you a candy, and you get a maple syrup candy in the winter. And you eat that it's phenomenal highly recommend Canadians will appreciate how fantastic that is and maple syrup has a lot of minerals and a lot of goodness in it very good for you very good for you within reason of course right Let's assume, so what we've done with these two lines, we've added them, we've subtracted them, we multiplied them. What are we going to do now? We're going to divide them. Let's divide them. Okay. We're going to take this guy and divide it by that guy. So we're going to go our new function, y3, is 2x minus 3 divided by x plus 2. Okay. And we're going to graph this. Now keep in, keep in mind, that was a line and that was a line. A line and a line, right? I think y1 went like this and y2 goes like this, right? Should we put them on there? No. Let's just stay with this one. Ah, no, let's put them on. Let's put them on very lightly. Okay. Here's line one. Negative three. One, two, three. So here's our first point, the y-intercept, and 2 over 1, 1, 2 over 1. So here's line 1. Let's draw line 2. Line 2 is 2, and then up 1 over 1. Here's line 2. Here's line 2, y2. Right. Let me move y1 up. So it doesn't interfere with our line. Here, we'll put y2 here. Or sorry, y1 here, right? My line curves a little bit. It's not supposed to be a curve. It's supposed to be a straight line. So let's do it this way so it's not confusing. y1. Hopefully that's straighter. Okay. It curves a little bit up there, but okay, let's make it straight. Let's make this thing straight. Let's see this. Okay. Now, let's figure out what this line looks like. We're going to graph this guy. Now, when you're graphing these things, these are called rational functions. Okay. Because it's one polynomial divided by another polynomial. Okay. And polynomials are basically smooth functions, right? One thing you gotta do with these things, there's one thing you cannot do in mathematics, and that one thing is divide by zero, okay? The limitation of mathematics is no dividing by zero. Alex, how are you doing? Welcome to another live stream. <laughs> right? We cannot divide by zero in mathematics. That is a restriction that we have. So what we end up doing is, whenever we get a function, any type of function, 
we always look for the restrictions. What can't we do for this system? Because a function represents a system, right? So for the system, we go, what are the restrictions? The restriction for the system is the denominator cannot equal zero, right? So you take whatever is in the denominator and you go x plus 2 cannot equal 0, which means x cannot equal negative 2. For this system, x cannot equal negative 2. 1, 2, negative 2. And what we end up getting is, I'm going to do this in red, this becomes a vertical asymptote. And an asymptote is a boundary that you cannot, a boundary that you cannot touch, go through, okay, period. You can't touch it or go through it. Okay. This line, whatever this function is doing, if it approaches it, it either needs to go whoop, up along it, getting closer and closer, down, getting closer and closer or it stops it can't touch it or go through it it can appear on the other side but it can't go through it right so we have a limitation a restriction okay that helps us out a little bit now there's another restriction when it comes to rational functions like this and the law says this here's let me write down the rules for this if you have a function ax to the power of n plus whatever divided by dx to the power of n plus whatever okay ordered from the highest degree down right this is an m this is an n okay that's a rational function it's just one polynomial on top of another polynomial then if the power up top is bigger than the power on the bottom there is no horizontal asymptote if the power in the bottom is bigger than the power up top, then the horizontal asymptote is at y is equal to 0. If the power up top is the same as the power in the bottom, then the horizontal asymptote, because this was our vertical, horizontal asymptote is a divided by b. So horizontal, horizontal asymptote is equal to a divided by b and in this case is going to be y that's horizontal asymptote horizontal asymptote is a divided by b which is 2 over 1 which is just going to be 2 so we have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 2 so here's a horizontal asymptote So we got now four quadrants that our function can appear in. Okay. It can be here, it can be here, it can be here, it can be here. Now if it appears here, it won't appear there because it won't be a function otherwise. Right? And if it appears here, it can't be here. If it appears here, it can't be here and vice versa. Right? So all we have to do now is find points for this function to be able to graph it. First point we look for is the y-intercept, as long as the asymptotes don't go through the y-intercept. Right? So let's find the y-intercept. Let's do it here. y-int. To find the y-int, set x is equal to 0. Okay. So this was the first thing we did. Here's the second thing we did. Here's the third thing we're doing. And you follow this thing. Left some patrol on back. <laughs> what you do, there's certain points you follow, right? What's back in? Hmm? What? Water from? Water from toilet. You've been drinking too much water from the toilet seat, man. I think your brain is becoming mush. What you need to do is learn a little mathematics. Less toilet seat water, more mathematics. <laughs> I just did. I just wrapped it for you. If I'm, if you want to watch rap, brother, go see David Chappelle's Block Party, or see David Chappelle's Block Party. It came on two thousand and five. Fantastic. 
Listen to the rhymes of Dead Prez is dropping on you, okay? Or Mostaf or Talib Kowen, right? I live like a wise old man. Don't be fooled by looks, right? Y intercept set X is equal to zero. I might not be a wise old man. I might just be a trickster, right? Set X is equal to zero. So Y3, when X is equal to zero for this function, it becomes two times zero minus three divided by zero plus two. Two times zero is zero. Minus three is negative three divided by two. So when X is zero, y is negative 3 over 2. 0 and negative 3 over 2. When x is 0, y is negative 3 over 2 is negative 1 and a half, right here. Okay. Now, if you learn how to graph these functions, you know what this function is going to do. This function is going to look like this. Okay. Now, I'm going to approximate it because what you should do is find a couple more points along here. Well, we can. Let's find another point. So we know the function goes through here. So we know it doesn't appear above this, right? Let's find what, let's do a table again. What y is equal to when x is equal to one. When x is one, y is gonna be two times one minus three, one plus two. So that's gonna be two, two times one is two minus three is negative one over three. When y is one, or sorry, when x is one, y is negative a third. So the graph of this is going to look like this. Okay. Because as you approach an asymptote, the line can't touch it or cross it, so it acts like a magnet and it keeps on pushing it away, and this thing gets closer and closer. I thought it was great in one of your earliest videos when you put it on Mathematics by Molstad. Very fun and great song. Yeah, yeah. And that was... Uh, uh, unfortunately I put that on uh, and for a while that video was the uh, I think it was the real number set one of the first videos I ever did and that album was amazing Mostaf and Talib Kowel uh, doing I think that was from black on both sides uh, it goes, mathematics uh, fantastic a lot of depth in that whole album right but unfortunately it got copyright hit for a while the sound was gone and then now it's back and uh, the video has been jacked by RCA or whoever wants to compromise to it, right? But I've kept it up, right? I had a lot of, I, I cut a lot of my mathematics to a lot of hip-hop. Uh, yeah, Black on Both Sides. Fantastic album. What a fantastic album, right? So this part looks like that. So we know the graph is not going to appear there. And this links up with infinity we're talking about. So what happens is, as X gets bigger and bigger y approaches to but never hits to right so it goes like this forever and ever as x approaches negative 2 from the positive side from above negative 2 y gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller to negative infinity over here y approaches 2 over here y approaches negative infinity Let's see what happens to the y when we're on this side of the asymptote. And all you really need to do is just find one point. Because the one point you find is either going to be in this quadrant or in this quadrant. Wherever it is, if in this, this quadrant, the graph is going to do this. If it's here, the graph is going to do that. So let's plug in x is equal to negative 3. So that's going to be 2 times negative 3 minus 3 divided by negative 3 plus 2. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 minus 3 is negative 9. So this is going to be negative 9 divided by negative 1, which is oops, 9. So when, y, when x is negative 3, y is 9. Right? So it's like way up here. So the graph of this, did I do this graph? I hope so. Uh, yep. So the graph is going to look like this. And this asymptote is going higher and higher. So we just ended up graphing a rational function that looks like this. Right? And where did we get this function? We got this function 
by taking a line and dividing it by another line taking this line and dividing it by that line so we took two lines added them all it did was shift the line we took two lines subtracted them all that did was shift the line we took two lines and multiplied them and that created a parabola and we took two lines and divided them and that created a rational function that has asymptotes restrictions right infinities crazy right absolutely powerful and that's how mathematics has come to be we start off with some basic concepts for us it is addition subtraction multiplication division we learn what it means to graph a line and from there we're here within two steps we're here really and we have to understand these types of systems and these are what you graph in grade 12 and grade 11 sometimes if you're lucky in my part of the world in other parts of the world you learn about these things much much earlier okay that's one thing i wanted to do i wanted to uh, for this one because a question came up regarding quadratic so i wanted to give a starting point for it and build it up to the quadratics and as well expand it into the into the radicals and stuff okay i hope that makes sense i you know i skipped over some minor concepts and some major concepts but this is basically the flow of logic that we're following when it comes to graphing these types of functions fun 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 that was a nice little lesson i think that was good how we been what are we at oh we did an hour and a half that's good that's good I actually should have scheduled this uh, stream for about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes or so. I have a student that I got to go see after this, like Speedy Gonzalez style. Uh, but it was fun to do. I really tried to make sure I was able to get this on here. Okay. Uh, I hope that's okay with everyone. Uh, I hope that uh, helps you out if you're looking for uh, sort of intro to quadratics and what you can do with functions and linear functions and how it's all related. Dragon, say G show. When's the next comic stream? Uh, comic stream. Uh, I have to think about this. I got uh, just to let you know where I am. Just a little update. I'm gonna put out an update video. Uh, but I was able to. I lost a hard drive, my main editing hard drive, so I transferred back things up, restored some stuff, got onto the other internal uh, hard drive that I have. So I'm gonna start editing on there. So we're doing a couple of live streams uh, this weekend. We're doing current events tomorrow we're doing um, education on Sunday talking about the education system since school started I want people to get a feel for anyway, what I think about the education system and how they can optimize it right for themselves I have a couple of videos I need to shoot one of them is uh, a review the reason I'm, I'm mentioning block party as well because I rewatched it because I'm almost finished uh, for knowing uh, the Thelonious Monk graphic novel that I've been reading that I've been looping Thelonious Monk for last over the summer for the last three months I've been looping it phenomenal like really brilliant 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 stuff so I want to do a comic book video where I'm giving a review of uh, Monk which is basically Thelonious Monk uh, graphic novel on Thelonious Monk so that's going to be a comic book video okay genius pro hi chicho life nice to see some math on twitch very nice very nice indeed very nice indeed love doing these right we're going to do a lot more of these and then i'm going to make a quick video of making um uh, if, if all the editing goes well by the way i haven't done one round of editing yet uh if my computer doesn't crap out if everything works out fine all the fields are filled in properly and stuff like this the next video I'm gonna put out is making just a quick little video it's not gonna be live stream just a quick video of making cornelian cherry liqueur okay because I went pick more corn cornelian cherries so I'm gonna make a cornelian cherry video okay mm, nice I just saw monk in the shop room. dude if you like graphic novels biographies uh, 
and if you know his music and you have to listen to his music to have a full appreciation of what the graphic novel is like read that graphic novel the art is amazing should i show you guys a little bit can you do a video dedicated to the medicinal cannabis industry in us and Canada? i hannah brother i mean i want i plan on doing something like that there's a whole uh video series that i have planned on making regarding the mathematics of prohibition okay and that was my plan from 2010 to put that thing together right and everything's been rolled and at that time canada hadn't legalized a lot of states hadn't legalized like it was legalization wasn't even on the table right some people were pushing it but nowhere to be found right i plan on doing a whole series of mathematics on the mathematics of prohibition okay uh, i gotta pull the data uh, but we can definitely do we can talk about it for sure Hannah. okay uh, but regarding monk is absolutely brilliant graphic novel the artwork is amazing let me go grab it i'm going to show you guys some pages on it So here's the first few pages, right? Very simple. And then, ah, uh, um, yeah, snap. Right. And it's, and it's, the noni is just dancing. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, keep that tempo max. Tubs are hot. beautiful the horns charlie is nailing it and the bass is walking just right johnny man this cat is smoking wow the music check it out check it out beautiful just pulls you in it's happening it's still alive i am still alive and I still remember my name. Check it out, check it out. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The Nolius Sphere Month. Ba -ba. That's the intro to this. Right? I'm, I'm here. I've <laughs> almost finished it. Right? That dude it is beautiful it is beautiful let me find you like and there's so many different musicians in this right there they talk about some musicians in this and uh he's jamming with some of the greats and like i don't know how accurate this stuff is right but it's trippy it's beautiful man and there's like uh, what do you call it uh, there's rothschilds in this like i didn't know like there's meaning like i can't even show you this like this is just bopping like really just beautiful man just beautiful you know what hopefully in the video i'll try to remember to pick out some pages where i can show you guys <laughs> like look at this just like bop it right it's it as, as a comic as a comic book lover this was a must this is a one of the best graphic novels i've read in this genre right uh, biographies bibliography i guess and I don't know how accurate this is. I don't know um, Monk's uh, history and stuff. So there's a video I need to make for that. And then, odds are, I'm going to make a video giving a little update and a little intro. And because I lost the hard drive and stuff like this, 
Um, if you remember last year, we did a whole uh, weekend of Monopoly, live streaming Monopoly games, right? There were 17 videos, live streams, uh, games that I ended up uploading to BitChute. And I did segments, like 10 minute or five minute segments of them all and put them all together and loaded that on YouTube. Now all the live streams, I didn't load on YouTube at the time because YouTube was going through some changes and you know, black marking, you know, nailing people who were uploading from Twitch and stuff like this. So I didn't load them on YouTube, but I've already loaded them on YouTube. They're all private. And once I do the intro to the Monopoly and do a little update, uh, for about a week to 10 days, I'm just gonna release all the live streams we did on uh, last year, the Monopoly games that we played, okay? So I got, for last month, I have a few things lined up. Oh yeah, there's a video I need to do uh, as well on talking about physics textbooks. So there's three videos I plan on making, short videos. One of them is a review of this. Another one is making uh, Cornelian cherry liqueur Another one is talking about physics textbooks because someone's been reminding me that I've promised to do this. So I definitely want to do it in the next couple of weeks. Okay, so that's what I got lined up. If all goes well. If it doesn't go well, I'm going to sell more comic books to be able to raise more money to upgrade my system. We'll see what happens, right? You're going to do a Bill Hicks break soon. Seems like you're going strong. I know, brother. I've been meaning to do a Bill Hicks break for a while, but... Uh, uh, computer crashing, the hard drive crashing, sort of said, okay, no Bill Hicks breaks for you, Chicho. <laughs> I keep on going hard. And I enjoy doing this, right? But I do need a sort of Bill Hicks brace coming, coming up soon. It'll probably be during the time when I'm uploading the live streams, monopoly live streams. May I propose that you, to explain how multiple computers can work together to find prime numbers? It's an unanswered question I made a lot of time ago to some professors and I didn't find anything useful on the web. You know what, uh, Genius Pro? I think uh, I haven't looked too far in, too deep into this other than blockchain technology. And what, uh, for what I understand, with cryptocurrencies and blockchain, multiple computers are working to solve problems, mathematical problems, right? And the computer that solves it gets the tokens and stuff like this, right? But a lot of that stuff is related to prime numbers, uh, from what I understand anyway. Uh, so one place you can, you probably be able to get the answers for this is look into how cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology works. Okay. I think anyway, it should be there. Something should be there anyway. Okay. Um, Anyway, that's, uh, that's a quick little update for you guys if you want to know what I'm doing in the background and where I'm going. Um, and then once we get into that, there's a whole bunch of math stuff I got lined up to do, a series, but I have to make sure the editing stuff is working fine for me to get into the making the, the set of math videos that I want to make uh, because I don't want to shoot them for it not to work, right? And then once that's done we're going to get back into comic book readings there's a whole bunch of comic books that i want to read uh so we'll get into that as well okay uh, i know a lot on the plate a lot on the plate man but loving every 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 minute of it right uh, i wish i could freeze time and just do everything but then it wouldn't be life right part of the beauty of life is having a lot to do and a lot of great things to do and not finding the time to do all the great things that you want to do that way you're always left wanting right and that keeps the spice of life going right maybe it's just uh, uh it's just a way to trick your mind to enjoy life as much as possible but for me it works for me it works okay okay gang i think we're gonna call the stream there um what I'd like to do is uh, get ready to go teach my student. And I do have to set up the stuff later on tonight for uh, tomorrow's live stream that we're gonna do regarding current events at 9 a.m. my time. And um, 
da, 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 da. and on Sunday we're going to do a live stream on education, just just discussion. Uh, so if you have any questions regarding education, uh, drop by on Sunday. If you have any questions regarding current events, what's going on? There's a lot going on. Tomorrow, nine a.m. and on Sunday, one p.m. my time. Okay. Aside from that, thanks for being here again, uh, Mask of Raven. Thank you very much uh, for the help. See you tomorrow, hopefully. Hopefully, Mask of Raven. Hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. If you can't make it, and um, I'll try to keep you guys posted as to what I'm doing in the backgrounds here. Okay. Uh, that's it for now, gang. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, Hannah. Zinni, thanks for the stream, man. Enjoyed it. Great, great. Glad you enjoyed it, man. Mathematics. How could you not enjoy it? It's a similar unanswered question about the random number generator algorithm. Uh, Cryptation is not so well explained in practical terms. I mean, I know the theory, but not the concrete facts. I'll look into it. I'll try to look into it. I'll try to look into it uh, when I free up some time. Okay. My genius. <laughs>